Hi everyone, we're finally coming to the end of our lovely fluffy cat drawing and this is the last video on this subject and we'll be finishing off the rest of the face, the whiskers and adding in the final touches. If you want to go back over the previous videos you can find links to them all in the description below and as always I've added the materials list down there too. So let's get going. So I really hope you've enjoyed um, this particular series and I'm hoping to do some more like this as well. Um, so the, the, the final part of the cat basically is kind of finishing off those whiskers, uh, coming and working round on the um, finish off the side of the face um, and adding in the chin area. Now I find whiskers really really tricky actually. I, I, I have a bit of a, a, a mental block when it comes to whiskers. I, I have no idea why. Um, these whiskers, that, well there are loads and loads of different ways of adding whiskers or white hair or things like that in over the top of darker colours. With this particular piece I used a white Faber-Castell polychromos to plot the whiskers in first. So what I tried to do and it kind of worked but didn't work brilliantly and, and actually I can kind of share my thoughts on that a little bit. Um, I tried to keep them quite sharp so the polychromos uh, white is actually not a brilliant white for um, working over the top of other colours. It's not particularly opaque and it also has a, a resist which means that um, it's quite difficult to get other colours to work over the top of it. You kind of get a bit of a slippery feeling with it. So for whiskers actually it's pretty perfect because it resists other other colors going in over the top of it um so what i was trying to do with this particular piece was a couple of things indent the paper and add a bit of a resist with the white polychromos and it worked to a certain extent um but the I, it wasn't sharp enough i should have anybody who knows me will know how incredibly lazy i am i should have sharpened it in between every single whisker and i didn't i just kind of you know merrily went on my way so you've got some sharp whiskers and you've got some quite dull ones um but actually it it, it works okay it, it's um you know it's quite a good technique actually for whiskers very hard pressure sharp white polychromos get your whiskers in and indent the paper at the same time and then you shouldn't really have any problems with your pencils sort of skipping over the indented line and also not going in over the top of the white whisker. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm working between the whiskers, adding a little bit of shadow here and there. It's really, really important that your whiskers aren't just a white line. So just putting a white line for in for a whisker is not going to make it look realistic. You need to add a little bit of shadow underneath it. You need to add a little bit of uh, sort of shadow where it attaches to the face. Um, and there needs to be sort of light areas of the whiskers and darker areas of the whiskers and you can do that. I'm using a white museum aquarelle here, um, or I was doing, uh, and that's a really, really great white. It's very opaque and it gives you a really good crisp white. Uh, so using that over the top of the um, the polychromos and you can see again I'm working within those little whisker lines in there those whisker holes and trying to make them look realistic in that they're not just a mark on the paper you've actually got some tonal values in there as well and you can see kind of where the whiskers coming out you know of that whisker line so that's really really important uh, for realism you know not just a whisker and that's it you've got to then work around the whiskers to make sure that they look you know uh, realistic you'll see me using the paper stump as well quite a bit in this piece and that's to get a really really lovely soft feel um i i've started to use a few things like that particularly on pastel mat um very soft paint brushes um paper stumps but I use very very light pressure and the light pressure is key if you push too hard on pastel mat with a paper stump you end up pushing everything into the tooth and the tooth actually comes right back at you I think I mentioned before so just be really really gentle if you're using something like that and you can see here I'm starting to use all sorts of different throwing everything at this piece <laughs> seems to be anything to do with cat's whiskers and that's it kitchen sink everything gets thrown at, at it so I'm using the slice tool I have brought in some um you know some nice sort of highlight areas with the scotch magic tape um, and then just working again into the chin area one of the techniques I really really love is this sort of subtraction technique so you put the pigment in first and then you lift the highlights out that's something that comes quite naturally to me um, and I find it works incredibly well particularly with these lighter colored animals um, you know having to sort of isolate highlights 
I think it's too much hard work for me, to be honest. I prefer the sort of easier route or what I see as the easier route. Um, you know, so put all of that pigment in first and then just sort of lift it back out again with either using the slice tool or the or the scotch tape or, um, you know, if you can get your white pencil in or your lighter pencil in over the top. Um, but the, the whole the whole kind of feeling around this piece is the softness. Um, and I find the pastel mat is a, a particularly great surface to get really, really soft fur. I know it can be incredibly frustrating if you get a really grainy piece. Um, and I now am very, very particular in the pastel mat pieces that I use. If it's any way grainy, I just I just don't use it and I'll, I'll use a different piece. Um, I know that you know that's not an option um you know because it, it for some people because it's it's quite an expensive surface um but the you know the the heartache and the frustration you get from a really grainy piece of um of pastel mat can be oh it can be so frustrating um you know so i try to kind of stick with the the smoother sheets um i find the use of the kneadable eraser incredibly uh useful technique as well um not only for just sort of lifting highlighty areas but also for smoothing um you know it can kind of smooth and blend your pencils as well without taking all of the pigment out it'll just sort of uh lighten it up a little bit and smooth it off which is really great I think one of the things that this video shows really, really well, actually, is the the layering process and the amount of layers that I guess are necessary to create something like this. Um, you know, with colour pencil, it is it's all about the layering. Um, and I like to kind of work from the inside out. So sort of work from uh, the lightest colour that I can see and kind of bring it back out. So it's almost like the opposite of working with with pastels. Um, but saying that, you know, there are times where I use light colours in over the top of dark. So there's, there's never really one set rule. I think coloured pencils are, are very, very flexible with how they work. And depending on what surface you use as well, you know, you can get some amazing um, effects and techniques using them. One of the frustrations with pastel or another frustration with pastel I love this surface but it does have a few little frustrating um, areas is um, sometimes you get these little marks on the paper on the surface that will not take pigment um, and in this case I had a piece or a little area just on this the mouth area here so I'm using a product called uh, brush and pencil touch up texture and what this does is it's like um it's a liquid that you brush on. You can see me doing there. You leave it to dry um, and you can then work in over the top of it. It gives you an extra couple of layers of texture. It's part of the brush and pencil uh, range of products and they've got some amazing uh, products in there. And it, it just means that when you've got these tiny areas that are just, you cannot get any more texture in there at all. You can't get any pencil in over the top of it. Um, it it's like a real... Um, it's just it just kind of saves it basically and you can then put the brush and pencil te uh, touch up texture in over the top leave it to dry which I'm doing here I've obviously just you know painted it on left it to dry and then uh, I can come in once it's dry and draw in over the top of it and it's a bit of a lifesaver actually um, so zoomed out again we're starting to add a little bit more of the darker areas in here don't forget that light animals actually have some really really dark areas in them um you know the shadows can be really really quite dark and it's surprising we always think of them as being very very pale and actually you know this is i've got some dark grays going in here i've got some uh you know some dark browns going in there um you know so don't don't forget your dark areas your shadows you know and if you the problem is if you create them and they're too light then everything becomes too light and the whole thing becomes almost like a tint so the the dark areas are incredibly important one of the things that i find really really useful actually on a on a piece like this especially if i'm going to be taking out some of the pigment with the slice tool is to add a more wax based pencil first the wax-based pencils tend to sort of cover the, the surface of the paper. And when you use a slice tool in over the top of them, once you've got a couple more layers in there, 
it um, the slice goes straight down to the 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 initial wax layer rather than onto the paper and it's much much easier to take out the the pigment rather than using one of the oil based pencils you can use a prisma luminance you could use a, a wax a blender one of the full blenders from the luminance range they work really really well and it means that you get your initial layer down you then use your slice tool to sort of create some of those little highlights and texture marks and then you can come in and work around those slice marks with your darker pencils to create some of that lovely fur texture and it works really 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 well so you know there's a the, I've used a huge amount of different tools in this particular piece it's not just about the pencils um, I don't use any blending solvents or anything like that I, I a lot of people ask me if I use solvents and I don't ever um, I have tried solvents in the past I think when we start using a, a medium light colour pencil you kind of learn about all of the different tools and things you can use to kind of help and I have used solvents so I've used zest it in the past and um, sadly it made me incredibly ill so I don't use any solvents at all now and actually I really just like using the, the pure pencil um, you know with the different tools that I can incorporate in there to create the effects I want to use but um, you know there are plenty of other uh, artists who do use the solvents and you know use them very successfully so if you want to kind of use that uh, that sort of a thing then um, you know give it give it a try um, but I don't ever use them um, so it's, for me it's all about the layering as you can see from the the, the videos that I've been um, been showing you uh, it's all about the layering process you know building up that lovely base of color the color blocking and then working up getting your tonal values in and then putting your details in over the top um, and this works really well for pastel matte pastel matte's an abrasive surface so you can get sort of you know a lot of layers in there but this also works very well for smooth papers too um, you know color blocking working on your tonal values and then bringing your details in over the top works on all sorts of surfaces uh, you know it's just it's just the process really you can see here i'm starting to come in a little bit in that area that's got that um that little sort of uh mark on it that I've put the touch up texture on the best thing I can suggest if you end up with a scratch on your paper and pastel mat does get scratched easily um the best thing to do is ignore it don't try to cover it up straight away what you'll find is that with the layering process the more layers you put down the more likely it is that your uh the little mark will disappear you know so try to ignore it try to work around it try to just you know think that it's not there and then sort of keep coming back to it work over the top of it gently um you know and, and usually by the time you've finished it's not it's not discernible at all um you know but um yeah so i'm just starting to add in all of the lovely soft colors around the edge of the face there as well so i really really love how this has just sort of softened out we've got those lovely lost edges you've got a little bit of color you've got those lovely light areas and they're all sort of softly blending together and that's um very much a part of 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 my uh style uh, is that really nice lovely soft subtle um you know look and feel of the fur i guess uh you know i i do love colors and i will you know my my sort of more brighter colored animals have got a lot of color in them but these um these lighter colored animals i love this this just sort of very pale soft feel uh you know i, I just think it looks lovely so uh, and it's one of my favorite things to draw actually is the white on on white um you know, I just think it works really, really well. These whiskers on this side are particularly complicated. <laughs> I think I had a bit of a bit of a drama with these ones. Um, I mean, my drama doesn't really consist of very much. It, it normally consists of me a big size and um, you know, head in hands type thing, and then <laughs> and then just cracking on. Um, you know, that that's probably as far as it goes with 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 drama when it comes to me. Um, and it, you know, it is it is tricky, isn't it? You know, when you when you're drawing something like this, and um, and you get to a part and it's just not working properly, and and all I can say is just, you know, uh, keep your cool. Um, if it's going wrong, um, one of the worst things that you can do is to try and put it right without making a plan. Uh, you know, so if it is going a little bit wrong, have a bit of a 
walk away have a bit of a cup of tea or a <laughs> glass of wine or whatever you need to just calm down a little bit um and um you know just uh just make a plan a plan of action is much better than diving in and trying to uh, you know rectify things without sort of especially if you're a bit grumpy you know if you get a bit grumpy if something's not going right and then you try and <laughs> you try and fix things it can all go terribly wrong um so I really, really hope that you've enjoyed uh, this series. I know it's been a little bit whistle stop and um, you've, I've been going my usual, you know, talking 10 to the dozen and probably not making a huge amount of sense. But this piece is uh, available as a full uh, tutorial, all completely um, real time with, with voiceover if you wanted to have a go at this. Um, and I think it might even just be on the £5 tier on my Patreon. So yeah, I really, really hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and um, yeah, looking forward to seeing your, your comments. Hi everyone, thanks for watching this video and I really hope you found it useful and have learnt something new. If you have any questions or queries, please feel free to leave me a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button below and if you'd like to find more tutorials filmed in real time with loads of detail and full step-by-step -step instructions, you can join my Patreon for just £5 a month. You can find a link for this in the description below. I hope to see you again soon.